Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today we are here to talk about the brand new NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960 GPU. This is an example of one sitting here in front of us. This is the one we did our initial review on. This is the Asus GTX 960 Strix, meaning that it's supposed to be part of its quiet, power efficient lineup. But as it turns out, all of the GTX 960s are gonna be incredibly quiet and incredibly power efficient. Now the GTX 960 is an interesting product. Uh, it is based on a new GPU called GM206 uh, that has some interesting specifications. It's got 1,024 CUDA cores. It has 128-bit memory bus. It has clock speeds of around 1126 base, 1178 boost or so. Um, really think of the GTX 760 or 960 as half of a GTX 980. It is essentially half in every capacity. CUDA cores, textures, um, uh, your memory bus, your memory bandwidth, all those things are basically half of a 980. So you kind of get an idea of where this is going to be performance wise. Now its price point is going to be less than half of a 980. This is a $199 uh, card for your reference models. This particular card will be about 210 or 215 when it's available, which should be today as you see this video. And I've seen a large list of cards that range anywhere from 199 up to 239 or so for something like the MSI GTX 960 100 ME uh, special edition video card. Uh, so they, they are kind of in that, I'd say 200 to 210 price range is where you're really at. Now the competition from uh, uh, for this card comes from both the NVIDIA lineup and the AMD lineup. From NVIDIA, you've got the GTX 660 and the GTX 760, kind of the same position in the market uh, two generations previous. And then from AMD, you have the Radeon R9 285 based on Tonga and the Radeon R9 280 based on Tahiti. Now, both of those cards from AMD are in the $200 price range as well. You can get some in rebates for as low as 180, 190, and sometimes they go as high as 230 or 240, just depending on what the deal of the day is supposed to be in that regard. So those are the kind of primary competitors. Um, what's interesting about those other two cards is the AMD cards have larger memory buses, uh, more memory bandwidth. Uh, they, the, the 285 has a 256 bit memory bus and two gigs of memory and the 280 has a 384 bit memory bus and three gigs of memory. So the potential capacity performance is there for those parts to be uh, a little bit better. Now let's talk about performance. Out of the box, we use this Strix card as kind of our baseline uh, uh, performance metrics here because there are almost no reference cards that are shipping with the 960 release. They're all kind of overclocked by at least a little bit. And the GTX 960 does not run away with the performance win in this case. There's actually a couple of instances where the 960 and the 760, both from NVIDIA, are performing about the same. Interesting, but not completely earth shattering, I guess, uh, considering the GTX 760 is based on GK104, a much larger GPU. Uh, when we compare it to the R9-285 and the R9-280, most of the time, those two parts tend to be a little bit faster than the GTX 960. And by a little bit, I mean anywhere from dead even to say five or six percent or so in some of the, the worst cases. Now, like Battlefield 4 is faster on the 960, Crisis 3 actually faster on the Radeon 285 and, and 280, right? So it's kind of a mixed bag for the GTX 960. It does not win and run away with the performance crown like the GTX 970 did upon its release, which is gonna be a little bit disappointing for people that maybe were expecting that. Um, um, but again, if you kind of, if you really know GPU technology and you knew the specifications, you were probably able to guess that. Um, uh, reference performance is going to be maybe two, three, four, five percent less than what we, uh, based on, you know, based on what our Strix testing is. But again, I don't think really many people are going to end up buying one of the reference models to begin with. Overclocking capability, I was actually able to push this up to a uh, rated boost clock of 1.42 gigahertz, so 1420 megahertz. And we actually saw clocks hitting as high, stable, like static, at 1498 megahertz, only, almost 1 1.5 gigahertz clock speeds when we overclocked this particular card with its uh, impressive cooler and whatever. Uh, and that's gonna get you another five to 7% performance boost over what this is, which is obviously gonna move you up a little bit more in that product stack compared to other NVIDIA and AMD parts. The other big thing that AMD, or I'm sorry, that NVIDIA is promoting with this rather is MFAA. Uh, 
not what you think it is, but multi-frame sampled anti-aliasing. Remember that it was launched with the 970-980. Now with, with this car, they're releasing a driver that uh, adds support for MFAA for any game that has support for multi-sample AA, with the exception of three that I can't quite remember off the uh, top of my head, Max Payne 3 being one of them. But if the game supports MSAA in the settings, it will now support MFAA. And that's going to give you a big performance boost in certain instances where you're basically running at the performance level of 2x MSAA with the quality level of 4x MSAA. So that's something worth checking out. Um, so if performance isn't particularly outstanding with this card, it doesn't blow away the competition. Where it does do that is in power and power efficiency. The TDP of the GTX 960 is only 120 watts. The uh, R9285 is 190 watts. That's a 70 watt gap. That seems pretty substantial, and it would be. However, in our power testing, we actually are seeing closer to 100 watts of actual real world usage difference between this particular Asus GTX 960 Strix and a, uh, I believe it's a Sapphire retail Radeon R9 285 graphics card. That's a hundred watts difference. And as it turns out, in theory, this is something we're gonna test a little bit later, you should probably be able to run two GTX 960s in the same power envelope as a single R9 285. So in terms of efficiency, the GTX 960 is outstanding, right? Just like the 980 was and the 970 and even the GTX 750 Ti from very early last year. Um, th this Maxwell architecture is proving to be an incredibly impressive piece of technology, still based on the same 28 nanometer process technology. NVIDIA has just gotten smarter about how it is building its particular GPUs. So we've already talked about pricing 199 to 210 to 220, depending on uh, what you get. Those people that are specifically concerned about performance per dollar. You don't really care about power consumption, you don't care about noise, you don't care about heat, um, you're, not, you're not impressed by things like power efficiency, then chances are the R9 285 and R9 280, if they get a little bit more price drop here in the next week or so after this release, are going to be your best bets. However, if you are either an NVIDIA fan or you like the idea of what Gameworks is doing or what G-Sync is doing or uh, you, know, you like your user experience with something like GeForce Experience and you already have an NVIDIA card and you're looking to upgrade, you know, if you're a user of a GTX 760, the performance gap's probably not enough to upgrade, but if you're a GTX 660, or before that, 560, 460, or whatever, uh, then I think the GTX 960 is a really, really compelling option there. It's just not the runaway home run that we saw with the 970 uh, back in September of last year. So uh, we have a full review that has lots of benchmarks, like tons and tons of benchmarks looking at reference performance, overclocked performance, uh, a bunch of different games, MFAA performance. That's all at PCPer.com. We'll have the link in the show notes or rather in the description here below. Uh, so you should definitely go check that out. And uh, if you either are going to miss it or have missed it, we will have an interview with NVIDIA's Tom Peterson dis uh, discussing here specifically the GTX 960, what features it adds and what may be coming in the not too distant future from NVIDIA as well. So we'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.